Hey, Mina, how are you? Hey guys, so if you can't, um, good to see you all. So I just want to tell you that I am taking this live on Facebook. Is that a, an objection from anybody? If it is, you can mute, uh, you can take the video off and mute yourself. Okay. So we're going to get started in a couple of more minutes while um, others join. Yes, I, I have a friend trying to get in. I, I, I invite my yoga friends, Mina. Okay, no, 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 that's wonderful. And I'll see, uh, you know, somebody's waiting and then I'll admit them. So very good. And I am taking this live if you... Um, I can ask you to do that. You take your video off if you don't want that. And, um, and you just let me know if there's a problem and I'll just, I'll, I'll fix that. All right, so thank you so much. So we have uh, so far, there's five, uh, five of us. So thank you so much for attending. I am going to get started. So welcome. Um, so I, I want this to be a more conversation. Um, I will share my insights and where I want to take you, and then we will have some time uh, to interact uh, for questions and such. So, um, you know, as you know, there's you know, any struggles that we have had, we're kind of in like in a holding space. I call it like the pause between the inhale and the exhale. Like there's a real balancing thing that's going on in the world. And I think it's um, going on internally as well. So I have noticed, um, or I've come across, I've had a lot more phone calls, people wanting to work uh, with me to overcome their struggles and um, their um, challenges with food, because many of them have turned to food for comfort even if you didn't before. Uh, so also our schedules are changing, our lives are changing, and food has taken a whole lot of new meaning. And, uh, um, and also at the same time, in a very good way, there has been a lot of awareness about health. So, you know, I think that has prompted people to pay a little bit more attention and lean towards a healthier eating. So that's all a uh, good thing. So, you know, when I think about food and my, my, you know, forte or my, um, I always like to dig deeper because I think when we make changes at the deeper level, then we can fix, then we can change, make changes on the level that we are desiring to make changes. Many times with food and nutrition, you know, it's so much of it is just we're dancing around the surface. And if we continue to dance around the surface, we will continue to dance around the surface. We will never get anywhere. So we live in a world of where food is available 24 seven. Um, now there's, you know, online and there's an abundance. Food is available from across the globe. And we have so much information on the nutrients, on the miracle foods, on, you know, all the life enhancing food products and, um, and also just, you know, the abundance, the abundance of food that's available. At the same time, there is so much, there's, there's recipes, you know, you Google one thing and you can get 10, 20, 100 recipes on the same thing. Recipes are everywhere, but even with all of that, so my question always remains, the food, there never has been more struggle with food than ever before. So, and so obviously, you know, kind of swimming in the information and having yet another recipe or tuning into another diet or having another diet is not where the answers are. You know, the, the answers are in the question, if we ask ourselves, why is even individually, why am I struggling with food? Is it just because I am not a 
a person who likes to cook? Is it because, um, hold on, there's one person coming. Is I'm a person who just, you know, food is not my thing. So I don't even like to uh, worry about that. I just do the very basics. And so all of us, you know, each one of us who is struggling with the food has to ask that question as to where the struggle is. Why am I still struggling? So in asking that question, I think many of us will find that the struggle is really not in the lack of information or lack of food. And, you know, there may be this misconception that uh, perhaps the struggle is because I just don't have enough time. If food is such a stressful thing. I don't have enough time. And so I think these are the, these are kind of the traps that are set up around food and nutrition that keep us stuck um, in the food. So when I look at food, food is at the basis of at the center of our life. And I think it may be too center in our life where there's, you know, I call, I, I, as I thought about it, I'm thinking, you know, food has become a rich person's indulgence and a poor person's prayer, but it remains a struggle for many across any status background and it doesn't matter. And the food allows us because we have, we are viewing food in a way which is going to keep us in uh, struggling with its use and what the purpose is or why, or we, it'll keep us stuck in the same old struggle that we have been. So the, you know, the answer is not in, you know, I don't have another diet. It's not in another diet. So it's the answers have to come deeper. And I think even the knowledge is there. There's a gap between knowing um, things and, there's, and the doing. So there's a gap between the knowing and the doing. And that's the gap. That's the conversation that I want to have with you today. And that's the conversation that most people are not having, I think. Because when there's a gap between what I know to do and I continue to do this, you know, somebody is filling up that gap. Who's filling that gap is the food corporations. So that your choice of what you eat is not made by you. It's made by the food corporation because the portions are, you know, packaged and the nutrient contents and all the goodness in the world without any time at all. And, uh, here you have it. All you have to do is press the button and take five minutes and eat it. So, and, and, and our struggles still remain. So there's something in a big way, there's a miss when it comes to our struggles with food. And that's the conversation I want to have with you. So at this point, what I'd like to do is since you joined the call, you joined this um, webinar, can you tell me, can you share with me where, why you attended this and what is, if, what is the struggle that you are hoping to overcome? What is your challenge when it comes to um, eating the right thing, maintaining your weight and being, being happy with your health? So where is your struggle? So feel free if you want to unmute and talk, you can do that. If you want to send me a message in the chat, that would be fine too. So I think, you know, if you're okay, you can still keep your picture off if you like, and you can um, share the share with me and uh, that would be great. So we can have a conversation because I don't want to fill your heads with more information. I don't want you to get stuck in yet another box, the Ayurveda box. The point of Ayurveda is to break apart all the boxes to enable people to ask the bigger question because from a bigger perspective, the answers become clearer. We begin to connect the dots. So we are not forever prisoners to the diet world, to someone else coming up with the miracle food for you. So uh, that's the point of Ayurveda. That's the point of my talk. That's the work that I wanna share with you. So, so why don't you share with what your struggles are and what prompted you to uh, attend this. Um, hi, Mina. Thank you so much for doing this. Sure. Uh, love listening to you. My struggle is um, sometimes I, I struggle with eating enough 
or eating food that is hot, you know, I just, sometimes I start skipping and start eating cold and start eating less. And it feels like it depends on my state of mind. Like if I'm not feeling great, if I'm a little down, I start feeling that, um, um, you know, I, I start taking less care of my food of yourself yeah yeah very good and anyone else hi this is denise um it's more since probably covid since we're in home a lot more i used to be out at night doing things so now at night i just find myself snacking all the time just probably out of boredom and i can't you know those pretzels just call to me even if they're in the cupboard so i <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I can so really. It's like how do I, you know, stop from, you know, constantly, you know, doing popcorn and pretzels every night. Okay, good. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah, that is a very peculiar situation that we are in right now. That's why I wanted to do this. And who else? You know, when you share, it really kind of lights up everyone else because there's no struggle that is just one person's struggle these days. I think our struggles are very common. Uh, so having a conversation really inspires others to talk and that's how we're going to get through this and learn through connecting and getting inspired and sharing stories. So anyone else who wanna share? And you can always interrupt me in the middle too if you feel like you wanna share them. So I'm just gonna look at these two. So, you know, from state of the mind, you know, how you, your state of the mind is affecting your food choices and affecting your food uh, intake and how you are eating. And, you know, it's a really good point, Denise, that you brought up that, you know, I'm just eating out of boredom. I'm snacking all day. So, you know, one of the things is, and that's, that's exactly the, the point that I want to make. Food is almost like an innocent bystander. Food really has nothing to do with it. It's become, it's at the whim of how we are feeling. It's like I'm bored, so I'm going to eat. I think we eat because we get to eat. We eat because there is to eat. So, you know, um, and that's, that's kind of you know, become, that's the mindlessness. That's where we need to bring more mindfulness, but I'm going to get into that again. So, so you know, when we, the food, how we eat and what we eat and our um, presence during what we're eating has very little to do with food, actually, or the choice of food. It has to do with the person doing it. It has to do with um, your state of mind. How are you living day-to-day -day life? What you think, what you feel, and most importantly for many, it's the belief one carries about one. So in order to shift the, you know, how we look at food, we have to look at, um, you know, what the mind shift, what the mindset, what our mindset is. If, you know, if we just to take food just out of the equation, you know, here's the deal. Suppose, you know, someone rang, you know, the food was never in your house. Uh, it was being cooked by, um, I don't know, a kitchen away from your house and the bell rang and said, okay, dinner is, here's dinner. You eat your dinner, you help with the chores, you forget about it and you get on with your life. So if you're bored, food is never around, um, you've eaten your meal and you get to do other things while you're bored. Or you just don't get to pick food because it's not lying around. So we want to look at ourselves as to what, what is it that we are bringing into our, um, our nutrition and our eating and our, you know, and our relationship with food? So one of the important things to point out, because our schedules have changed so much, because life has become a little, you know, not a little, very uncertain, and our routines are changed and we are learning how to be in this new way. 
And I think even when we learn how to be in this new way, very quick, things are changing very quickly that whatever you thought yesterday is not valid today. It's not how you feel today. It's not what the new information is today. More, un more uncertainty comes and you just kind of are day-to-day -day navigating through your life. But if that's exactly the point that in the chaos, why is it, why it is important to anchor the chaos to something, to some ritual and still have a routine or you don't have to have a routine like a regiment, like perhaps you did when you went out to a workplace, but a regiment to begin the day and to end the day and putting together a meal time, like I'm, you know, I'm gonna have breakfast, I'm gonna have lunch, I'm going to have dinner. And it, we don't have to do all of it. And you know, I understand that even, even when we have some kind of a routine, we are going to be grateful that we don't have to get up, get ready and go to work because there's a time when you, know, you just don't do it at nighttime. You were worried about things and like that. So that's the day that I'm just gonna somehow survive the day. So that's okay. But what I want, what you want to be able to do is put, uh, but some kind of an anchor. Begin the day with the ritual, with any ritual, you know, whether it's just, you know, brushing your tea, sitting with a hot cup of water or tea and doing some meditation or a gratitude journal or uh, just some time to create a foundation for how you want to spend the rest of your day. Because I think that creating, having that mindset is going to trickle into, is going to add order to the chaos. So when it adds order to the chaos, it is going to line up things like, okay, you know, I had my breakfast, I'm hungry, I'll have dinner, lunch around this time, I have this project to do in between, and then I'll have dinner, and then I'll have this project to do in between, and even going to bed. So many times when we think, well, we don't have to, you know, report, we don't have to show up, we can show up even when we are tired, we can just, you know, put on our face and be in our pajamas, no one will know, you know, behind the screen. But... So that kind of a thinking is going to bring chaos, whether we are in a COVID situation or not. So you've got to have something that you're going to end the day with. There still has to be like between 10, 11, 9, 30, whatever, I have to go to bed. And what's my ritual about going to bed? Is it just sitting in front of the news or TV because I can? And then my sleep is disrupted? Or is it, no, I'm still going to turn things off. I'm still going to go get into my pajamas. I'm still going to read something. I'm going to still take a little time to wind down um, so because that how you go to sleep at night is going to affect how you wake up the next morning and how you start your morning is going to affect how you spend the rest of your day so it's sometimes a single step you know they say if you want to bring order into your life make sure you make your bed because that first step is going to trickle into the other step the other step the other step so and it's, you know, this is, this is a daunting task because we're kind of left to our own devices. You know, we, we're kind of left to figure out, you know, especially people who are living alone, who don't have the responsibility of the kids or the, another person isn't there. So they're like kind of, you know, it's wonderful and it's not so wonderful at the same time because you are kind of hanging out in no man's land. You're by yourself, you, you can do anything you want to do and what ends up happening, you do nothing and you graze all day. So don't, you know, so instead of leaving your day to chance and whatever you may do, whatever may, you may do, anchor your day with the morning ritual, anchor your day at nighttime. Even if you start with the morning, I guarantee you it's going to align your day. And so it's kind of think of that as an umbrella. There's an umbrella. If there's not a handle to hold on to, the umbrella is going to blow away. So you want to pull that umbrella down. So, you know, put a little peg at the beginning, at the one end, at the other end, and the middle of the day. So if you break your day into three little segments, morning, evening, middle of the day, and everything in between is a fair game. And to eat on time is to, um, you know, train the body that, yes, food is coming. Is you know, because, you know, again, there's, there's another you know, shift that we have to make. So food is not just, you know, empty calories that I'm hungry or I'm bored. Food is, 
it provides satisfaction and fulfillment on so many levels. If we, you know, if we don't enjoy the food and sit down and take note of the fact that we are enjoying the food and let that experience register, because when we don't take that time in order to get that experience, we continue to graze, hoping to get that experience. That's what's really happening at the subconscious level. We are trying to feel that fulfillment that, oh my God, the food was so good. I feel so satisfied. I loved eating that, or I love this taste. But if we don't do that and mindlessly graze, the fulfillment and the nourishment on every level isn't there. So you are continuing to seek it all day by grazing, by grazing, by grazing. So this is, it's really important that um, that's the one of the mind shift that we have to make, which is instead of, you know, from thinking about food as stimulation, you want to think about food as presence. So we are bored, you know, some, something tasty, something crunchy, something sweet, something with boost of energy to give us that zing and you know we we eat that but really the truth is when you become present when you take time to sit down and eat and really take all the time you want because now we have the time we can take anywhere from 25 to 45 minutes to sit back take a bite look at the color texture take in the taste and imagine all the hands that were on that that were there to bring that food to the table and you know, really being present with the food in every aspect is going to nourish you and enjoy the food. Love the food is eating the food and saying, mm, oh my God, that just tastes so good. You know, finger licking good. That's the nourishment that we need. When we don't give ourselves that nourishment, we're continuously looking for it. So try creating a time for eating and put all the taste and all the, your little goodies and things that you like to in, in, enjoy eating and enjoy it. Enjoy it, give yourself permission to enjoy it. And then when you're satisfied, you're not gonna think about food until you're hungry again. Cause that's how the brain works. You just, you're fully satisfied, then you move on with your life. Okay, and so the second uh, mind shifts, you know, when I said is from stimulation to presence and from stimulation to nourishment, food has become like, you know, is entertainment. Food and entertainment go together. And, and that's where our mind is. So there's that, you know, the, the, the shift is, are we living to eat or are we eating to live? <laughs> there's a big difference. So the mind shift is, eating to live or living to eat. So when I say eating to live, you know, it may sound like boring, like, oh my God, I'm just barely eating enough just to make it through, just to live. No, eating to live means eating well to thrive. Eating in a way that gives your body, mind, and soul vitality, radiance, and the kind of health that you need as a fuel to take your, to, to do what you're here to do. So when you eat, when you are, you know, eating to live, it doesn't mean you're not enjoying it. It actually means you give yourself permission to enjoy it. What happens when we are grazing? We're pretending nobody's seeing it. And isn't that what happens when we are at a get together? People are just constantly eating for hour, two hours. They're just kind of hovering over food. And they're like, oh, I shouldn't be eating this. Oh my God, it's so good. Nobody actually sits down with the plate, sits down, focuses on the food and just eats the food. So they graze all day thinking, you know, I'm, I'm on this diet or I'm on that diet. I'm cutting calories, but it's a party today. We're getting together or oh, whatever. And then we encourage each other. Oh, you eat it. You eat. You deserve it. I mean, look at the conversations that we're having. How in the world food became that kind of a conversation or that kind of a focus? You know, in the, in the times in the world where food is barely, people barely have it, they don't have this problem. This is a problem of abundance. When we don't understand what abundance means, when we don't understand 
how to receive the abundance and how to be mindful with it. We eat because we get to eat. We eat because there's nothing else to do, right? So that's a mind shift. That the, the mind shift is what's going to help you see food in a way that it was meant to be. Food is means to an end. Food is there, so it nourishes you on every level. And with this kind of mentality that we are living in, another thing that is so commonly used in food is guilt. There's guilt-free foods available. That's how the companies fill the gap for you. Free food, you can eat as you want, there's zero guilt. First of all, the word guilt, it belongs nowhere when we are talking about having a food conversation. What the heck there's to be guilty about? Well, there's nothing for us to feel guilty about, but you know, it's, it's one of those hooks that we have bought into. Oh, and you know, notice next time when you're just kind of eating, notice what happens when you are guilty about eating. I had, a, you know, the, you work with many people on this. It's like, you know, I, I had like this, I had a, a, a donut. It was so good. And it made me feel really bad that I'm eating this flour and sugar thing. It's not good for me, am I eating this? So she created guilt around it. She created guilt around it to the point where she needed another donut to cover up that guilt. And it felt so bad that I'm like, well, I've already blown it. I'm just going to go ahead and have another one. And then it's just everything is downhill from here. Imagine, for example, if you actually ate the donut and say, my God, thank you, God. Such a delicious taste. If you just sit down and without thinking, without having the guilt and actually just enjoy the food. When we enjoy the food and give ourselves time and the permission to enjoy the meal. That's God's gift. And, you know, having, it's a divine activity. There's so many people who are starving, who are hungry in the world. So it's food is one of those, it's a gift. Food is a blessing to be able to cook for yourself, sit down and eat and feel nourished at every level. So the mind shift is to get rid of the guilt. You know, what you want to replace it with is enjoyment is enjoyment and healing. So it's not about guilt and don't buy into guilt-free food. And, you know, the third thing that, you know, another thing that we continue, we think about food, we're thinking about weight gain or weight loss, okay? There's not a single person who does not want to lose weight. And that mentality, what, what does that, what does that mind shift does? If that actually worked, nobody would be struggling with losing weight, right? Because they all would have achieved it. Be it's a trap because it'll keep you in the trap forever. Weight loss is a billion dollar industry. It's a billion dollar industry. So the mind shift is to get away from this. Don't worry about weight gain or weight loss. Think about health. Think about vitality, food, is the best fuel to keep you vital, to keep you healthy, so you have energy, so it lines up with you, you have energy to do, it helps you to move forward, it feeds your soul, so you have the energy to do what you came here to do. That's the point of food. Food should be, you know, enjoy it, love it, share it, but the mindfulness is another big deal. The mindfulness, because when we're not eating food with mindfulness, suppose we are eating, you know, like, you know, Denise, you said pretzels and popcorn. You take a bag full in front of TV or doing something, you can eat that forever. Now do this exercise, take a handful, you like them, take a handful, take a little small bowl of popcorn, go sit down, and really enjoy the last morsel. Really enjoy each pretzel. Give yourself permission to enjoy. Oh my God, I love the crunchiness of the pretzel, the salty, the dryness. I love this taste. And you really enjoy it. I don't think you'll be able, you'll want to eat more than five, six because you really enjoy it. But if you, the mind is not there, and the mind isn't there at the same time, the mind is somewhere else, but what's happening subconsciously, the guilt is going on. It's like, I'm eating this, 
you know, this is really probably not a good idea. What am I doing? I should have had dinner. I should really put the bag away. I Next time I'm not going to do that. You know what happens in that guilt? What you keep on doing subconsciously, you keep on picking the another bite. You keep on picking another bite. You keep on picking another bite. And the whole bag is gone. It's like, oh, darn, I did it again. Because we're not giving ourselves permission to enjoy. And we are feeling guilty about it. You know, when I talk about, you know, healthy food, our body isn't that fragile that if we ate something we love, if we ate a piece of chocolate cake once in a while, if we indulge once in a while, your body can handle it. It's a, it's a very fine-tuned engine. We are allowed to indulge. We are allowed to enjoy. That's going to keep us having that, uh, keep us away from an unhealthy relationship, relationship with food. Food has become this phantom that we either run to or run from. We need, it, it's about bringing presence into our eating, into the food, and giving yourself permission to enjoy. I think even just that mind shift will go a long way in, you know, in healing our relationship with food. Somewhere along the line, we have bought into this belief that if you always have to be careful with food. You can only eat this much. You can only eat at this time. And sure, there are guidelines, but that's not how life works. Or you can only do this. You should not do this diet. That diet is good. My goodness, who the heck can keep up with all of that? It's not possible. So the, the, the transformation is not going to come from information. It's going to come from us changing our direction inward, paying attention, being present, awakening the senses, being the presence will bring the enjoyment, the fulfillment that your body and soul is needing. And that's when we kind of let go of the food. We're not obsessed by it. We eat what we like, we enjoy it. And when we're done, we don't even think about it. We move on. But when we don't enjoy, there's guilt going on. We're thinking about it all the time. We're eating it all the time. So that's the mind shift that um, we need to make. So, you know, it's shifting our, and, and, and this association with the weight gain and weight loss. If there is, if, if there's like a diet plan or that's in our vocabulary, that has to go. I don't know anyone who has lost weight once and they haven't put it back on. So they're like thinking that another thing is going to do it. You know what's going to do it? It's your presence, your state of mind, and your life, which is aligned with your heart, soul's calling, soul's desire. You are living a mindful life. You are accepting what's coming, but you are awake. That's what's going to heal our relationship with food. That's when we are not going to be, um, you know, we're not going to buy into another gimmick. You don't have to lose weight or gain weight. Shift the mind to becoming balanced and healthy. From that place, you will make food choices in a way that will bring optimum weight to you. If weight, if you know, if our, if the the whatever showed up on our scale was the indicative of our happiness, then skinny people would be really happy. So we really want to get rid of those that those that vocabulary. We really want to think about balance. We really want to think about you know healing. Think of food as you know something that's going to heal you because food can be food is very nourishing and healing. Not the food by itself, but how you eat it, your presence to it, your mindset, what you're thinking and feeling when you're consuming it and how you're preparing it. So um, does that, um, so, so, so anyways, I want to stop for a minute and uh, see if that um, inspires any thought and questions from you. And uh, so go ahead and unmute yourself and please, um, you can um, go ahead and speak if you like. Anyone? Come on, talk to me. 
Um, well, Mina, I fall a lot into a from you. cooking uh, rut, like a food rut. So I don't want to do something. Um, uh, it's hard for me to balance my um, my uh my 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 that all the time i always have a little bit of iron deficiency and i end up forgetting yeah so that so what's happening is um there is you know because i worked with you before so there is again there's a there's a vata it's, it's kind of like a vata imbalance which is Remember the, the example that I gave about the umbrella? And it's to anchor that down at one or two or three points is the key. And that's the, it, it's, a, it's something that you think that, oh, you know, I did that and then I forgot about it. And it's something you just go back right into it. You, whenever you forget, you go back right into it. It's practicing that way of living, which brings a little bit more structure into your day. A little structure into the day is calms the mind. It aligns the mind. And when the mind is aligned, you're going to, you know, the food choices or how you eat is going to follow. Remember I said, make your bed in the morning. It'll create a dumb, it will create a little trickle into the, uh, the rest of the day. So I really, really believe in that. I really do that in my life too. You know, do that one thing, do that one thing. Next thing you know, the second thing works out really well. And the whole day, it just gets aligned. So what happens many with many people is we, we attach a lot to how our day goes. There are days, especially during this time when it's just, you know what, all hell kind of breaks loose. There, there, there are days where, you know, what happened to the whole day? Where did that go? And that is going to happen. But the point is, the reason why we get stuck in it is so it happens, so just move on. Now it's a new day. We attach on to it. We said, oh my God, I really screwed up yesterday. What's wrong with me? I need to really fix that. Just be with it. Just flow with life. Sometimes life is organic. You know, all you can do is be mindful and have guidelines. But then there are times it's like, oh, you know, I didn't sleep or phone calls came or this came or this upset at me and I didn't feel like it. And Next thing I know, the whole day, just I just blew the whole thing out of water. Let go of it. Let go of the past very quickly. That was yesterday. Today, new day. Today, new day. Today, new day. So be present today. Be present in the day that you're living. Don't judge yourself because it wasn't a perfect day, because you could have done better. Sure, you learned that. Do better. That doesn't mean you're never going to not do better in the future. We, we're human beings, okay? We're human beings. We, it's life is a practice, <laughs> you know? So it's really about letting go of if it wasn't the perfect meal or the perfect day, let go of that. Just begin tomorrow. You fall down again, don't worry about it. Begin tomorrow, begin tomorrow, begin tomorrow. Keep beginning, keep beginning, keep beginning. And you will realize that when you do that, you're going to have more and more days which you feel at ease and a comfort with, and less days that are chaotic. And that's success. Does that make sense? Thank you, Sonia, for joining. Always love to have you here. And um, so what else? Anna, did that make sense? It's, a, it's an ongoing process. It's yes. An, yeah, it's an ongoing process and life is an ongoing process. We think that somehow we're going to really learn it this time and then we don't have to worry about it. I have to tell you, big news for you. Um, you always have to not worry about it. You have to be mindful at it. And being mindful doesn't mean that, oh, I'm just going to be happy go lucky. Sometimes being mindful can really hurt. Sometimes can being mindful and being awake is not, you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's, it, you're awake, you're awake to all that life has to present you. So, you know, there are myths about 
if I fix this, then I'm going to be happy. No, just be happy with when things are not fixed. Life is like that. It's organic. Sometimes it's one big mess and you just go with the mess and, you know, smile, learn, do what you can, look at yourself and don't take yourself so seriously and enjoy the popcorn and uh, pestles once in a while. Why not? And your body can handle it. If so many of the other times you, you know, you, you are mindful, you're eating healthy. Why not? Okay. And who else? Any other questions? I have a question too. I talk to a lot of my friends because people have more time. So they talk about eating a lot more and I do it somewhat too with my pretzels and whatnot, but a lot of people feel like it's sort of like a reward. They made it through the day, you know, with COVID that they need to, they see food as uh, something to, I guess, maybe comfort them, like why is a reward? What would be an, an alternative that people could do instead of eating to sort of fill that gap? They feel like this, you, because there's less to do and then you just eat more because there's less of the other things that we- Like, well, I've stayed at home. I followed all the rules. So my little reward, I'm going to have a bowl of ice cream or something. But, or because I'm bored, that maybe is there something that to- So, yeah. To it, like, I don't know, should they do cross-stitching or something like that? Is there something else? Yeah, I think really, I, this is such a, this is such an important point that you brought up. And this is why it's important because- um, just hold on a second. Are you guys hearing the lawnmower going? No. Stay with that. Okay, it's just me. Everybody, people always need to cut their lawn when I'm doing, uh, when I'm on call. <laughs> COVID days. So I think that's where the, the our biggest dilemma is in the COVID time. Because the structure has been taken away and the life has been filled with uncertainty, we're left to our own devices. That's where having a purpose, having something to do, it is so important. Otherwise, it's going to send you right into to do that, which is you know, the easiest thing to do, the same old pattern. So... I always, you know, because I, I'm working, I'm online, I'm seeing, you know, clients online, I'm blogging, so I'm actually rather busy. And even if I wasn't, even if some people are not busy with work or whatever has happened, they, you have to find something. Like tomorrow, what is it that you're going to do? You have to find something to do, whether it's, like you said, cross-stitching, or I'm going to read a book, or I'm going to join a dance class on Zoom, or I'm going to join this group of via Zoom, you know, going for a walk, working out in the morning, pop up on a YouTube video, and uh, go for a walk, listen to some podcasts. There's a lot of, there's a lot of good information being available free that we can do, but it's just, we have to channel, we have to channel that anxiety, that restlessness, that unknown into something to anchor our energy. So it's for each of us to find what that is. And it may be that uh, something we've been wanting to do for a long time. And, and I understand one of the things I think that, you know, people intend on doing all of that, but because we are so subjected to the kind of the darker and chaotic energy around us and then we you know see the news we're like well we don't know what to do so we kind of hide behind the food or our screens um and that's when it's really important to connect with somebody you know make sure that you are talking to one person a day or a friend and say you know i'm going to check i'm going to check up with you we're going to have a conversation what are you, even if whatever you have a conversation about it's like we're going to talk once a day so I think that's really important. Otherwise, we're kind of, people are getting very isolated and they're getting very isolated and getting out in nature, having a conversation. There's also at the same time, there's a lot of Zoom. There's a lot of online meetings that are going up. There's meetup groups that are happening. I helped one of the clients find many meetup groups because she was getting really isolated. So finding some meetup groups, finding something to do and find another person to do it with. 
because when we are left alone, we are, you know, there's panic, there's fear. So, you know, we, we're looking for comfort. We, you know, that gap, and it doesn't matter how much we eat, we just can't fill that gap with food. So that's why it's really important to find something, uh, something else to do that fills that gap, that soothes our soul. Does that give you any, any insights or answers, Denise? Uh, yes, that's very helpful, thank you. Yeah, so um, and um, what else, anyone else? So I just, you know, um, if you, you guys have read my book, Healing Your Relationship with Food, and I've been doing some Facebook lives kind of on Ayurveda. There's, they're on my YouTube channel. They're on, the, on my um, website that you can listen to. And also, the, I, you know, there's, I did Heal Your Life podcast. There's close to 24 hours or more that you can listen to when you're going for a walk and things like that. It's really our attention has to, we have to channel it into our inner growth. We have to channel it into something that's meaningful for us and find that, in, you know, when we, you know, say yes to that, the information that you need, you'll continue to find it. Um, and that's how you go. And, you know, have, have conversations with like-minded people so they can help us get through it because we're in it for a long haul, um, at least, you know, this year, I think. So, Taking one day at a time and remember that um, we don't have to know everything. We don't have to understand everything, but if we just focus on a few things that we know to do, if we do that, our day and life will have a little bit more meaning and will make a um, little bit more sense. And, um, you know, it might also be helpful to, you know, have a little journal, have a little notepad that you jot down your thoughts. It just it helps you to drive, bring awareness to what's going on inside of you. And even when you're eating, like, what were you feeling before you, were, before you ate this or ate that? What is the feeling when you're going to go start eat? When there's a you know, feeling of confusion, heaviness, or anxiety, we end up eating mindlessly. So then it's time to just pause and do a five, 10 minute breathing or meditation, and then bringing your full presence to food. If um, there's another way to do that. And I think, I think writing down, everybody should have a journal, just write down your experiences, because it'll help you give language to what you are feeling. It'll help you validate your feelings. And that's a huge relief for the psyche. It's like, I'm not going crazy. I do feel this. And then, you know, having a conversation with a friend and uh, checking on one another can be some of the tools to survive and definitely getting out in nature. So, um, you know, and I think, you know, these are the questions that came up. Again, this is a big, this is a big topic. There's a, you know, I work a lot with um, food disorders, emotional eating and food addictions and all of that. And um, those are, you know, a little bigger um, topics. So that's where, you know, there's a issue with the self image. There's, you know, we have, we have the beliefs that we carry into uh, not in just in our eating, but in all aspects of our life that affect. So that's where that topic is. And I, um, what I thought about doing was to, you know, like a group coaching or a group support, but, you know, it's everybody's kind of minds are not stable in the sense that people are not in a state of mind to make a commitment to something. And um, because none of us really know what the world is going to look like in a month, two months, we hope that it'll be for the best. And I think that it will be. 
Um, so, you know, but so I'm trying to figure out how to support everyone, you know, when it comes to even just food with um, during this time. And I thought about doing like a, a, you know, three session, two hour, like a group coaching session to help people through it. But I also recognize that people need kind of an ongoing help. They need to be reminded of the same old thing. They need to be able to talk to somebody. They need to hear somebody else's story and to get that, you know, daily kind of inspiration. They may not have a huge problem with food, but really the the issue is the, you know, kind of the living the whole hum life and neither here nor there, boredom. And then you just kind of feel like you're not, life isn't going anywhere. So if you guys have any thoughts on that, uh, you can share them with me. I hope to do something in September, uh, start a program like that when it comes to, you know, with few things that I'm thinking about. So if you have any suggestions on what kind of help you would like and how I can support you, I would love to hear your feedback and I'll use that in um, moving forward in creating a program like that. I was ready, Mina, this is Anna. Yeah. I was ready. I was ready for, to do that session. And, um, and shoot, I really wish it, you, yeah, it, it did start it. Yeah, you know what, actually, yeah, I am, um, why did I not do that? I think because few people said that, um, mm. One person started working with me individually, a couple of people who want to do it because they're not, their summers are a little bit, you know, not scheduled. So they, and then I thought, you know, I don't know what people want. And I, I don't know, you know, that's why it really would be helpful to know what people want and how can I support them. Um, so that's why I put a pause on it because I thought, you know, I'd like to have about 10 people in the group because I think that gives everybody a lot of cushion and energy to interact. And it creates a, lot, a big, powerful container for everyone to feel inspired and be inspired. And actually, you know, that's the, if we can understand that bigger picture, move from the third dimension to the fifth dimension, I guarantee you our struggles with food are just not going to be there because we're just not in that same place anymore. We have found our purpose. We have connected. We have found our soul's calling. We have tuned into ourselves. And the gap that we were trying to fill with food is no longer there. We filled it with a deeper, much deeper connection. And that's a program that, um, that you know, I, I have. It's all planned, but I'm just trying to figure out the date. Mm. So you know, just to Michelle and Denise, would you be interested in a program like that? I'm sure I missed the beginning of what Anna said in terms of what you're planning to do. I'm not quite sure. So the, pro the program was, uh, it's funny that, um, isn't it funny that in the school struggles, we're talking about third and fifth dimensional. I love that because <laughs> I'm not giving you another recipe and I'm not giving you another diet plan. So what she said was, I put together a program is called um, Igniting Change and Finding Your Fire. So that was, you know, to help people kind of rise above their circumstances and um, kind of tap into that unrealized potential and move more into the subtle energetic realm of, you know, intuition and expanding the senses and feeling that connection with the deeper self and how to align with that and how to translate that into your life, whether you're eating or you're or your relationships so that was a program there's an application for it we don't have a date yet but it will be happening i just don't know when mm. is that of interest to you yeah, that, that could be interesting because i probably it's more you know i eat my pretzels but you know that's not a, a huge thing it'd be more like for a uh, motivation how to Exactly. It's your, I, mean, I, know, I know food isn't your issue, but it's like you need motivation, you need inspiration. Right. Because there's a lot of uh, on my to do list I should be doing, but I, eh, I don't want to do it. But how do I get motivated to do things 
And actually, but you know what? Higher. That's where the that's where the pro that's what the program is for, and that will have the group support. You asking the questions, and by asking the right questions, we get to the answer. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, I would be interested in something like that, just to, it, it, to you be know accountable. What I, mean? I want people to be able to, you know, ask. I want to stir people. I want to stir, you know, everyone up, so they can wake up to themselves. That's the point of that program. And that's where the inspiration is gonna come from. When we know we, there's a point, there's a reason why we're living in 2020 during these times, this is not an accident. You know, we're meant to be here. We're meant to do something. We're, there, there, this, is, this is very meaningful to be living during these time. And that's the meaning, that's the motivation that I wanna create a container for people to tap into and connect with that. It doesn't matter, it could be cross-stitching. It's not about what you're doing, but it's what do you bring into it and how do you do it? Mm -hmm. How do you show up for it? That's the inspiration where to make your bed in the morning, it's like you, you know, you're doing it with enthusiasm and you're doing it with meaning and purpose. That's the motivation. I think that's where, that's what this program is about. So I will send, you know, the link will be, I will send that again. Um, so when you see that, it's just an application to give me some idea and just apply for it. So then I know that you are another candidate who is interested. So I have about six people now. So very good. Michelle, do you have any interest in that? So... Michelle is my friend from yoga, Mina, and I'm so proud she's here. Yeah, okay. We, we yoga for 15 years together. Oh, nice. She's really good friends. So I'm so glad she's here. Oh, good. All right. Michelle. Yeah, Michelle, if you, you know, like to say hi and um, have something to add, that would be wonderful if you like. Uh, hey. She, oh, she said her art is not good. Okay, that's okay. You don't have to. I'm just actually looking at. Um... <laughs> um, yeah, I do have. I do have background music. Also, let me know if it's bothering you. Yeah. No. Um, well, I mean, I just realized that I should do Ayurveda every year, you know, and I haven't done it. So I felt like I fell off the wagon a little bit. So I haven't done my immunity pack. The only thing I kept doing was my cleanse, you know? Oh, okay. And this is not, it wasn't a good year to do a cleanse, you know? It was a little strange. Yeah. Right? Um, um, it's, yeah, I still, I, I have some kind of imbalance and I want I wonder if I can just uh, do some consultation with you uh, until we start the group on this, you know, because usually you do a group and then you do a, a personal um, a personal pack, right? Well, it really is individual. So just give me one second. What I'm going to do is... Um... I'm going to actually uh, stop the Facebook Live. Mm -hmm. Just so we can. So, and Anna, why don't you and I talk after this? Yeah. Right. Good. Okay. Okay. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for joining. Right. So be in the lookout for I'll have. I know the the help that's needed. It's not. It's more. It's beyond the food. Yes, we do need to understand the food, but I think it's beyond the food. So be in the lookout for another email. My emails that will talk more about this upcoming program. Okay, sounds great. Thank you so much All for right, joining. I'll be in touch. Okay, bye bye. Right. Bye bye. Okay, bye. Anna, you can call.